heal you, he'll heal me. If he healed me, he'll heal you. <laughs> Spiritually and physically. Amen. Many people have an easier time receiving the spiritual healing that they cannot even see or even imagine because it hasn't happened yet. We, we, get, we get saved, but we haven't been glorified yet. But we somehow we receive that. But we cannot believe that God Almighty can heal our physical bodies. Isn't that strange? Isn't that amazing? Do you know He can do both? Just like that. And through salvation, you can have access to both. Physical and spiritual. Salvation is whole. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Let me keep on. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Isn't that the truth? Amen. Jesus Christ, the rock of offense. People come against him. They'll come against his spirit. They'll come against his word. They'll speak against Him, and they'll still be religious, but they don't know Him, but they'll speak against Him. People will call Him a cult. They'll call His words not right, not loving, but yet Jesus Christ is love. Whew. They'll say, no, there is no hell. But Jesus said, yeah, there is an eternal hell. It's not His will that we go there. Matthew 25, it says, that was prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not prepared for us. He made a way for us to be saved, the consolation. He's made a way to redeem us from the curse. Yep. It says, yes, verse 35, yes, a sword shall pierce through your own soul also, talking to Mary, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What does it say in Hebrews chapter 4? Not only would it pierce Mary to see the rejection of Christ and watch her son be rejected and spit upon and mocked and crucified knowing that she was a virgin. Now she's the only one that didn't have to be revealed to that Christ was actually God Almighty because she knew she had to be in with any other man that this was immaculate conception. And she knew that they were doing this to God. You ever thought about that? The rest of us, you know, even Joseph had to go. He questioned, like, oh, okay, you say you haven't been with nobody, but you're right. You know, I'm going to put you away privately. And then the angel had to reveal it to him. But Mary knew. she It was her body. She knew she was a virgin. And she watched him reject God. And she watched him mock God. And she watched him pluck his beard out. And she watched him call him a, de a devil and a demon. She watched him beat him. It pierced through her own heart. She watched him crucify him and say, come off the cross now. And she knew who he was. But even so, she still had to also repent at the preaching of the word. As Jesus preached the word, even though she gave birth to him, she still wasn't saved. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. She also had to repent because it was the sword that would pierce through spirit and soul, bone and marrow. To cause her to receive him as her king, not her son, but as her Lord of Lord and King of Kings, the Messiah. You ever thought about that? That's amazing. That's the Holy Ghost, man. I'm telling you. It says in Hebrews 4 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two inch sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of what soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What did he just tell her? What did Simeon just tell her in verse 35? Yes, a sword shall pierce through your own soul, Mary. Also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So when the word comes forth, when the preaching of the word comes forth, that word starts revealing our intent. It starts revealing our thoughts. It starts showing you what wrong and right is. And even in Mary, that sword had to come through there. She could have rejected it also. Having the Son of the living God, she could have rejected and went to hell just like some people do now. Some people hate the word of the living God and they say they love it. Oh, I love Jesus, but I don't want to receive His word because it's too hard for me to receive. I must eat His flesh and drink His blood. Forget that. I'm gone. Many disciples left at that hard word. They said, this is a hard word. Many people claim to love it, but they cannot stand His word. When His word comes forth, and it says you can have no other gods before him. When his word comes forth, it says you may be denied of parents. You may be denied of your own spouse, your children, and all. 
You cannot put none above me. That's too hard. You must deny self, take up the cross, and follow me. That's too hard. There's many people don't like that. Many people don't like the gospel that comes forth. And they reject the word of the living God. Mary could have done that. Mary could have said, Woo! Because when her and her sons came to see Jesus one time, and he didn't jump at their beck and call, remember? He was preaching. And they said, your sons, I mean your mother and brothers are out there to see you. And he says, who are my mother and brothers but those who obey the word of my Father in heaven, obey the word of the living God? Those are my brothers. Those are my mother and sisters and brothers and all that. That's my family. That could have offended her. You can see Mary could have got offended, huh? Mm -hmm. But she didn't. She knew. That's exactly right. And she received him. So that sword had to go through her own heart also. This morning, maybe you feel like that. Maybe you feel like the words come across and pierce through some of the intents in our heart that wasn't right. All we got to do is say, you know what? I believe you, Lord. I believe that no matter what's in my heart this morning, whether it be some of these things, I believe that this morning you can take it, <laughs> fold it, and wash them clean. Amen. I believe, Lord. I believe. I, I love you, Jesus. Please, please come into my life. And even if you're saved, you can say, I have had a bad week. There's things I've done that's not right. Lord, I believe you can fold this for me. I believe also that you can cover it where it's not spread abroad. Can you imagine people's dirty laundry of their debts going through Israel at the time when they walk by so-and-so's house and say, did you know so-and-so was in debt to so-and-so because they had to post their bankruptcy? Backwards. They had to post their bankruptcy in a conspicuous place. Oh, but the consolation. Oh, but the comfort of Israel. Jesus would die on the cross, shed his blood, that we may be washed clean. And nobody know our business. Isn't that amazing? Unless you tell everybody your business. Unless you're in the Catholic Church and go tell it to a priest, and he's going to tell somebody, well, I'm in a Bible silence. Yep, they're breaking the next week. <laughs> sure will. But you can go to the one mediator, Jesus Christ, and he can wash you clean, covered, and those sins are passed as far as from the east to the west, even for a Christian. We forget that many times. We say, yeah, that's for a sinner. That's for us. Amen. That's for us. Amen. As we have the altar call this morning, I know it's a little different song, but do we anticipate? Do we anticipate the second coming of Jesus Christ? Because when you anticipate His glory, your work won't disturb you as much. When you anticipate His glory coming through the clouds, this Christmas season that is stressful. And the debt sometimes we get into won't it will confound you and disturb you as much. When you can anticipate His glory, what's happening in the government system and all around the world and with Obama and everything else, it won't disturb you. Because you're anticipating a new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. This Amen. world is not our home. God, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. This is not our kingdom. America is not the new Jerusalem. So when you anticipate His glory, His return, amen, and you believe with all your heart, it will cause you to live just and devout, and you will not be disturbed. You'll be able to depart in peace. Amen. amen.